Hello everyone and welcome back to another custom spotlight showcase video. Today you're getting three for the price of one. I'm going to be showing off my custom works unit coach and snowplows I tailor just for Donald and Douglas. So I started to work on these, crazy to think about, a, almost a year and a half ago because I was planning on filming my Love Me Tender remake in 2021. But when my parents decided to finish off our basement that winter, I had to uh, put a hold on filming. And when the opportunity for me to film again came up, it was past Christmas and I had to wait until December of this past year. So, yeah, these guys had been sitting in a box for almost a year and I was very happy to finally get them on film with them. But anyways, let's take a look at the actual items here. So we'll start by taking a look at the snowplows first. And I want to address something really, really quick. So, I know in the model series that Donald and Douglas have those bigger snow plows that push the snow off to one side. And there are probably going to be people in the comments that are like, Ooh, why didn't you replicate the ones from Season 2? Are you even a real fan of the classic series? You should have done that. You should have bought the Trackmaster items. Maybe, man, you should have spent $40,000 on the rare as hell Tommy ones. Man. Well, for one, they had these snowplows in the CGI series, and Learning Curve and Mattel never made snowplows, those big snowplows for Wooden Railway, and I didn't want to spend $40,000 on two trains that I'm probably never going to use again. But anyways, um, let's uh, get away from that and take a look at the items themselves. So, if you're familiar with the Thomas Wooden Railway line, you'll probably recognize where these come from, so... Um, Learning Curve and Mattel did a three-pack called The Adventures of Thomas, and that featured um, three different versions of Thomas, one of which being a snowy Thomas with a snowplow. So I bought both of them to see how difficult it was to take each plow off. I believe Donald has the Mattel one and Douglas has the Learning Curve one. So I went onto eBay and I found the cheapest Learning Curve one and I bought that. I have it right here. Let me just move these guys off the side. So here is Learning Curve Thomas. I think it was like eight bucks or something. That's probably because it's very beaten up at the top there, but I didn't really care about what condition Thomas was in. I just wanted to make sure the plow was in good shape and it was in almost perfect condition, so that was good. It was also really easy to get out. You can see there's a hole right where the magnet should be and there was a little peg on the back of the snow plow. And if you just pull it fairly tight or fairly hardly, It'll just pop right off, so that was cool. Speaking of that peg, though, it was incredibly hard to actually file that down, so I'll move these guys back even further. So we'll take a look at the plow itself. So it was sticking out right where that putty is. It was sticking out right there, and the plastic they used for this was incredibly strong. I tried to drill into it. I tried to cut it off with some pliers. It just would not come off. I think I spent around an hour, hour and a half trying to get this off, which is not pretty, but it did eventually come off. I had to do a little more filing and stuff to just get it to sit flush with Douglas. And interestingly, this plow fits almost perfectly with Douglas, but with Donald, it's incredibly loose, and the Mattel plow fits perfectly on Donald, but it's very loose on Douglas. So I don't know if that has to do with the magnets or the plows themselves, but whatever. And you can see right there, I did have to use a little bit of putty because it wasn't perfectly secure, but oh well. And then you can also see on the bottom here, um, it was kind of noticeable and it was sticking out a little bit of gray. So I just took a Sharpie and I just clotted that in. And then for the record, I'd just like to say that um, I just used a Sharpie to color in the entire plow for both this and that one. And they're pretty much identical to Donald and Douglas, so pretty cool there. Um, yeah, that's, um, that's really all for Douglas's plow. I'll show you how I get it on. It's actually fairly easy. You just gotta push it in really hard. Sometimes it tends to lean, like, to the top more like this, but... Well, it's not that crazy, so we'll just set him back there. Um, let's do this tender back and we'll take a look at Donald's plow now. So this is the Mattel one. Um, I think the Mattel Thomas cost probably like 11 bucks or something. And it came with the winter caboose, so that was really cool to get. But as you can see here, 
I did cut the face off of it to use for my tiles with interchangeable faces. And you would think that the Mattel one would be a little bit easier to get off because the Mattel items aren't as robustly made as the learning curve ones, but oh my god, compared to the learning curve plow, that one was a cakewalk. This plow was incredibly hard to get off. I don't know why it was so hard, but it took me, it probably took me like a day or so. So on the back here, right where my finger's pointing, there was a like flat piece of plastic and that connected right to where that blue piece of plastic is in the chassis. So it virtually made it impossible for somebody to just come along and take it off. But I think I broke like two X-Acto knife blades trying to get that off, but it took forever. It was incredibly difficult, but it did come off eventually. Um, yeah, and then I just took some pliers and I cut off that piece of plastic and it sits perfectly fine on Donald there. Let me show you. There we go. Pretty easy. And these are virtually the exact same plots as well. And I did actually get a, another Mattel Thomas just so I could have the plow to use for my regular Thomas and for Gordon. And if you're an eagle-eyed viewer or you follow me on Twitter, you'll probably know what that Thomas um, became. <laughs> I'll just leave it there. But yeah, um, the plows were hard, but in the grand scheme of things, they weren't the most difficult things in the world. Getting that face off of the wood Percy was harder than doing this, I'm assuming, but actually I'm going to put these back again and we're going to take a look at the work scene to coach. So, um, I was actually very conflicted um, when it came to choosing which basis I wanted to use. Um, I was tossing up between using either like an Annie style coach or a an express coach because in the show, the coach is longer than Annie and Clarabelle, but... It doesn't have any like bogeys or whatever like the express coaches do. It's kind of like right in the middle. And there hasn't been a coach like that ever made for the Wooden Railway Line. And I was in talks with Trackside Studios 06 about making one. And I couldn't decide between using either. Excuse me. Um, he didn't end up making it for me. I made it myself. But I eventually decided that I didn't want to ruin an express coach because those are decently valuable. And I had just retired my 2017 Annie and Clarabelle, so I just took the Clarabelle and used that. Now, I'm always hesitant when it comes to painting over items that I have some sort of connection to, but those models had such poor quality control and they weren't assembled very well. Like, Clarabelle's face was misprinted, like her whole, you can't really hear it, but her whole body is like loose and shaky, and I think Annie's probably worse, but... They were just very poorly made items, and I was like, fuck it, let's do it. Um, I don't know where that Annie went. I think I might have used it for another custom, or might have sold it? I don't know, but I could not find it for this video, so I apologize about that, but it's probably somewhere in this house still. Um, but yeah, anyways, this is a very easy custom to do. I just taped her up like I normally would and painted her green. I decided to match the coach from the model series because I figured I'd want to use this with the breakdown train. Um, the orange coach from the CGI series looks very nice, but I just prefer the green one. That's just me. And for those wondering, I believe I used maybe five or six coats or so. And the paint that I use, I believe this came from Michael's. I don't remember what the exact paint color is called, but it's a, not a darker green, but it's like an army... Not an olive green, like an army green, I guess. I don't remember exactly, but I'm sure somebody in the comments will tell you. But anyways, um, I did come in and paint the roof a bit of a darker black because the black on Annie and Clarabelle was kind of closer to a gray than straight up black. So I was like, you know what? It doesn't look that great with the green. Let's just make it a bit darker. And I think it looks pretty good. And then for the side details here, I just took a very fine tip Sharpie and I colored them in. They're not pretty, by all means, you can look at this side, and it looks bad, look at the door here, it doesn't look that great, and then here's the other side, and you can see how the works unit, I mean, doesn't look at all the same, so, but it doesn't really matter to me, and, oh, you can also see here, 
when I was filming the remake, um, I actually scratched up the paint, and you can see, I think this is where Clarabelle's face, nope, her face would be on this side, but you can still see some of the, like, orange or tan or whatever, so I was like, oh, that does not look good, let me just paint it over really quick, and I got some paint on the roof here, so I gotta come in and touch that up at some point. But yeah, um, for about 11, 12 months or so, that was, that was really the whole coach. Now, when it came to filming the remake, um, when I was filming the Natford Station scene, which is the first scene that I filmed in the snow, I figured, well, I had Donald couple up normally, and then I had a string running between, um, the coach and Douglas because the magnets are the same, so they don't, um connect with each other and they were being very fidgety and very weird if you ever tried to couple like an engine or do something like that um with engines facing each other it doesn't work very well the magnets get all weird and funky so um i had some string connected to it but i figured while i was filming the last shot at an average station i think you can still see it in the remake but i was like you know the coach is probably going to be uncoupled from Douglas a lot. It's going to really annoy me, so screw it. Let's just change out the magnets. So, um, yep, this one right here. Oh, God, there we go. So I had, I believe I used a wood Percy that I used for my 2022 Percy, I believe. I don't remember, but um, I took the magnet off of that. I just drilled into the chassis. I drilled into the chassis of this one as well. And the magnet kind of just fell apart in my hands. It wasn't pretty at all. I think I threw it away. I might still have it, but I don't know. But um, Under this tape here, you, it's going to pull it up, I think. Yeah, but there's some um, putty underneath here to keep the magnet from, like, slipping out. So, yeah. And it looks, it looks perfectly normal to me. And, yeah. It's kind of like Mighty Mac where it couples different ways. Let me just steal these here. Let's see. Works perfectly fine. So yeah. Um that's um uh, that's really all for the video here. Um bit of a shorter one, but there's not a whole lot to talk about here. Um these are fairly easy customs to do. The only difficult thing is um removing that Mattel snow plow and the peg on the learning curve one, but other than that, fairly easy. Um these do hold a very special place in my heart because I believe this was the first, like, big modification that I did. I had done repaints before, but I had never, like, cut anything off, I don't believe, so... I'm very happy about that. Um, these aren't... This isn't gonna be the most expensive custom to do ever. Um, you can probably find the Learning Curve Snowplow Thomas on eBay for under $10, and then... I'm pretty sure everybody has, like, a spare Annie or Clarabelle or something, so you just take one of those. Doesn't really matter the condition too much unless you want to have all those, like, nicks like this underneath the paint, but I think it should be fine. But yep, and then all you need is, and then everything else you'll need, you'll just need, like, a Sharpie and some green paint and such, and then you'll be golden. But yeah, um, I think that's pretty much all I have to say. I know I tend to ramble and stumble over my words a lot, but I just have so much to say that I gotta spit it all out as fast as I can. But I'm trying to slow down. I noticed that when I was doing Thomas at Home. I think I said that when I was filming my Slate Trucks video or a Rosie video, but I talk very quickly, so I apologize about that. But anyways, if you have any more questions for me about this, leave them in the comments. I'll be happy to answer them. And that's pretty much all I have to say. So thank you guys so much for watching. And I'll see you later. Bye bye bye. I'm trying to be really cool with how I say bye. But it doesn't really work out. So bye.